So hello on this beautiful Monday morning. Um, it is what, October 30th, so the day before Halloween. I took today off, it's tomorrow off for Halloween, but I plan on getting some work done today on the car. And I've actually done quite a bit, and I apologize for not videoing it because it's just, man, it's just sometimes easier to put the camera down. It really does take a lot of time to turn the camera on and just film everything. Plus, some of the stuff I'm doing is just mundane and kind of boring. I don't want to bore you guys with little stuff. I want to try to show you guys the major progress and help move the stuff along. But um, I got some things crossed off the list here. I got the AC bracket swapped with the EGR system pulled. Uh, drain the coolant here. Label sensors. Not a whole lot here. We got the 5.8 oil return. Oil shaft. But I've actually done uh, quite a bit that's not on the list. One major feat being the heater tube here. So this guy was pulled off since I am keeping my stock heater. He did not have the stock heater um, tubes in place. He had the sensor, which is actually screwed right into the intake here. So he had this screwed in because he wasn't going to run his heater core heater. I want to keep all the factory heater stuff, so I had to take that out. And honestly, spent the majority of yesterday pulling it off of the 86, painting it, putting it on here. Now to take it off, on both engines, I had to remove, well, the upper intake's already removed on the 86, but had to remove the upper intake and had to remove the um, <laughs> the fuel rail on the passenger side to lift it up enough to get it up in here. But now it's it's installed correctly. The bracket's screwed down. Um, the bypass is installed correctly. If you remember, it had a, uh, a block off, just a plug here. So now we've got the correct heater loop going through the EGR block. So that's installed. Um, and I, that's, that's a lot, I mean, honestly. Um, I got new hoses for the front. So those are new hoses. I use the old clamps, they're actually better clamps. I guess the factory ones, but these are nice clamps. They're fine, uh, but there are new hoses. I figure there's no point in putting the water pump stuff in without new heater hoses, but the heater is now ready to go. It's ready to plug in right there to the firewall. Now I cleaned these up really good. I cleaned up as best as I could. And a little bit of corrosion on them. Gave it a nice coat of black paint. So that part's done. Um, while I was at it, I pulled the intake, of course, and I uh, replaced the intake gasket and tightened it down. What's funny is when I pulled the gasket, a piece of it broke and fell off all the way down. Luckily, it landed on the uh, number one intake valve. So it was just hanging out there on top of the valve. And luckily, the motor wasn't you know, the valve wasn't open on the motor. So, with about an hour worth of shot vac and compressed air, I was able to ultimately blow compressed air and that piece flew out. So, it was brittle. Just the corner of the gasket snapped off and fell in while I lifted the intake up. So, that's taken care of. Um, I got the AC mounted just to make sure everything was going to fit the way it's supposed to. I'm not going to use this AC compressor, even though it looks better than mine. I know mine works. So I'm just going to... Uh, Drop the motor in place, put the AC compressor that's in the motor um, in place. So let's check this out. So yeah, nothing really here to see other than the heater crossover tube is is now been pulled. So it's, you know, it went in, of course, there, down the fuel rail, and to the back of the heater hoses. The heater hoses are, are pulled and ready to go. Um, the fuel lines have been disconnected, and I'll show you guys real quick right now a quick tip on moving the fuel lines. Check this out. You see how when I push it in and I let go of it, it pops right back out? So that's the problem I've been having. If, if I push it in, as I'm trying to pull this out, this comes out like this. You really need three hands to do this, unless you use a pair of vice grips. Okay, so if I take this pair of ice grips and loosen them up, we don't want to crimp down on the hose. All this is really doing is holding the quick disconnect tool up in the position. And I think I may go to a little bit larger size. Let's see if this works though. So I'm going to push it up, put the quick disc, or put the uh, vice grips underneath underneath it. Tighten it down really loosely. Then you've got leverage to pull down. So 
this will allow me to twist it like that. Get it loose just by twisting a little bit, and then should be able to just push down on it like this. Boom. So that's it. I'm going to put the line back in just temporarily, but so that is how I got my fuel lines off. Um, trust me, I tried this with my hands and it did not work. <laughs> the vice grips aren't there to actually grip the tube. It does let you spin it, but it's also to hold this quick disconnect sleeve uh, tool up into the springs. That's really what it's doing. It's helping keeping it pushed up. Okay, moving back to the engine here. Let's see here. What do we have left, guys? We've got we got to remove the bell house bolts and the exhaust and the starter. So that's a big job, and um, I think we're gonna try to tackle that. Oh yeah, I did one more else, one more other thing here on the '89. I've got a guy coming to pick up the car tomorrow. Um, actually, he's not picking the whole car up tomorrow. He's going to give me half of it and give me the rest of it later. Whatever the deal is, I made a deal with the guy. And um, he's serious about it. He's going to come get this car. So, yeah. Rest assured, folks, that the car is not going to go to waste. I don't know what he's going to do with it. It's not really up to me. But um, the whole car is going. I'm not stripping any more body panels off of it. So, I'm sorry, whoever wanted um, the GT moldings and everything. Um, I'm not going to strip it out. I'm going to leave it just like this. I've got an extra hood in the back of the F-150. I'm going to slap on it. And uh, the car is going to leave as a roller. So that should be gone. should be gone fairly soon. i got some guys picking up little pieces. Um, I had a guy pick up the sun visors. I had a guy pick up. He's going to come pick up the, the shroud and the overflow tank. And um, I pulled the gas tank in it last night. So he doesn't want the gas tank. So I'm going to sell the gas tank. It's in, it's in really good shape. But the main reason for pulling it, as you guys know, is because I need the pump for it. So the pump is out. And I'm sorry to make a video on how to pull the pump. I will make a video on how to install the pump, which is obviously the reverse of pulling one out. So um, it is a Walbro. Looks like it's a 195 flow. I looked at the part number. So BBK slash Walbro. It looks like it's in fairly decent shape. Um, I did tear the filter and sock on it. So I need to put that on my list. I need to get a new um, filter for it. But anyways, there it is. So soon we'll be having to pull the tank on the 86 here to put that pump in. But man, we're making progress. The motor is, I mean, really, it's ready to go in. The, the belt is going to be too short. I'm probably going to try to do a 3G alternator before putting it in as well and keep the underdrive pulley to see how the 3G will run with it. If not, I'll just swap the pulley out. Stock pulley, which is smaller, um, but these are obviously much tinier than your average um, average pulleys. But listen, I'm just going to run them. Uh, I'm going to run these and see how they work. And if I have problems with them, I'll I'll pull them off. But stock ones back on, no big deal. Um, but yeah, this is not going to cut it. Definitely not. It's going to be too slow. It's going to cause too much strain on the alternator. It's not going to be spinning fast enough to keep it cool, and that's what causes fires. So. Yep, I need to replace this guy, put a 3G on it before we fire up the motor. So there's a lot of changes. A lot of changes. Um, when it comes to firing up that motor, there's going to be so much that's been changed. It's ridiculous. I mean, everything from the fuel fuel pump to the mass air conversion to the new engine, a bunch of new water stuff. So there's chances for water leaks pretty much everywhere. But anyways, we'll work through it. And um, I guess now I'm going to work on getting this exhaust off. Ugh. So, not looking forward to getting underneath the car, but hey, it's got to be done. So, let's get the car jacked up and get started. Same and say we're 
live free And those who will speak freely So I can wind up dead Open your eyes and see me Don't get a cool, uh, okay. mask Okay, I'm gonna hide and put it on You don't need to see me, I'm gonna show you Ah, it's Captain America. It's a little crooked, but that's cool. It looks good, buddy. It looks good. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, bud. Looks good. It's a little crooked. Okay. Let's yank this exhaust off. That didn't fit me. Uh, it fits, bud. All right, guys. So the first thing we are going to do to get the exhaust oh. off. Oh, and it is nasty under here. Ugh. Put all this new stuff in. I'm tempted to pull the transmission out uh, just to clean it because it has an oil leak, and the oil leaks made it quite nasty. What was that, bud? A bag of but we're gonna get rid of these catalytic converters. Cause they're not working anyway since the air, the pneumatic air pump's been removed. So. Um, anyways, all I'm going to do is disconnect. You got two O2 sensors, one here and one there. We'll disconnect those first so I can get to the bolts of the header. So there's one there, there's one there. And for this job, I'm going to get my impact fired up. Yep. So once those four are disconnected, we'll come back here, disconnect those four to try to drop, drop the H pipe. Yep. All right. Okay, here's my incredibly unsafe uh, collaboration here are, yeah, this is extensions and two extensions, an adapter, and a swivel to a 5 socket on the impact. Alright, there's one. Come on down here with me, guys. I want you to get sandwiched between the car and the ground with me. Um, that bolt is, you can see it, it's right behind the O2 sensor, and I can't get an extension there without hitting the O2 sensor. Um, the O2 sensor, if you can see it, looks incredibly rusted. Um, getting that thing out is going to be a chore. My new exhaust has O2 sensor in it, but what happens is this extension socket is not fitting it goes right there and that is about all she's got but it's not even all the way on the on the bolt as you can see right there so what to do what to do I think what I needed to try is a possibly a shorter socket buddy all right, so I can't. These, these bolts are rusted so much so you can't even see threads on them. I got one of them off, so I went ahead and unbolted the bottom or the back cap back for here, and we're gonna break out the sawzall because there. I mean, seriously, I, I can't even begin to explain how much cussing has been happening right now because I mean these threads just cannot. They are completely frozen. I don't know if y'all can see up here. Let me show you. Yeah, if you can see right up in there. <sighs> Anyways, the threads on these things are absolutely frozen. So, I'm going to have to cut these out. And maybe even take the headers off. Try to just squeeze this completely out. So, right bud? Okay, there's one side. Alright. This damn thing's heavy. Is that what you're trying to cut off? Straight to the trash, son. Okay, that's how you do it when you're impatient like me. So that section's out. Um, the cap back is going to have to be replaced. Or at least... Well, I guess it could stay. For right now, um, I mean, I got mufflers for it. It's going to be straight exhaust with that 
H pipe, the BK H pipe I've got, but at least it'll bolt up to that. So that'll work for now until I get a the cap back. So I've got mufflers for it, and I may actually take the time to take this out, bolt in the mufflers. But for now, we're getting the engine out, and that's that's done. I mean, uh, no, it's so not done. Jeez. <sighs> Anyways, that's what we're worried about. I don't have a hard time. Probably gonna have a hard time getting these. Uh, uh, Calic converters out with the motor, so those are so rusty. I mean, maybe I can take the headers off, but I'm then worried about busting the header bolts. But that's probably the best thing to do is once we get everything else unbolted down here, try to get the uh, header bolts out of the motor so we can pull this out. Okay, I've removed, let's see here, four, I mean, basically all the starter are the uh, bell house bolts removed for the bottom. The ones I can reach from the bottom, uh, I've used my impact on, which kind of helped in a lot of extensions. I got, of course, the bottom starter bolt off. You can't ever get to the top starter bolt. There's two bolts holding the starter on. So basically, to release this motor from the car, I have to remove uh, the engine from the transmission. Well, to do that, you also have to remove the starter. The starter will hold hold the um, the flex the flex plate, I guess in the bell house so it can't slide out so you do have to remove the starter now if I remove the transmission and engine at the same time you know everything can come out as one piece and that would not be actually a bad idea if I can get the whole thing out then I can clean up the transmission as well but I think I'm going to go ahead and just try to remove uh, the rest of the exhaust so I get to the upper starter and get everything out that way so that's what I'm doing um, I'm just unscrewing the header bolts here with a, um, a 916 and working these out, I'm going to try to slip the exhaust through the bottom, hopefully. i got a pretty good feeling that's not going to work on this side because the starter, but at least it may let me access the starter bolts a little bit better. So right now I'm just unbolting. So I'm going to get both sides of these off and continue on, man. Ooh, it's close, but nope. I don't think it's going to come out. Now, hold on, hold on. A little bit of wiggling. Look at that. All right. Ah. Look at that Ford tag just dangling. I bet these Cali converters are shot. So we can see inside of here. Yep. I can't see it. All right. Okay. Starters out. Definitely been replaced once before. Cool. Actually looks fairly new. Okay guys, starters out. Let's get to the other side of the headers and uh, the two bolts on the motor. And I'll try to get the motor mount bolts off themselves. And there's absolutely nothing keeping me from pulling this motor out. I'm going to go ahead and put this, well, except for help and an engine hoist but other than that yay I'm gonna go ahead and get some grade 8 bolts though put this back into the uh, into the head so I'll use these to lift the motor out Okay, the other header is gone. The last bell house bolt is taken off, so basically I just used a couple of 916 um, wrenches and reached it back there. You can't see it, but I reached it back there. They're right up there on top. You used a long one here just to double them up, give some leverage, break it loose. Once it's broken loose, a couple turns of this, I can unscrew both of them with my fingers. So the bell house is officially unbolted. Um, we gotta get this ground little ground strap off here. Cause that is connected to the motor. That'll tear off if I don't do that. 
and the motor mount bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and take these off. And believe it or not, there is only two of them, one on each side. So you've got the, you know, your main bracket going to the motor. And then there's two bolts holding this bracket on to your actual motor mount here. And then there's one big bolt that goes through the frame and is bolted on uh, by a fairly good sized nut there. But it's, you know, the forward leaves you enough room where you can get a socket back there and wrench it loose. So let's do that right now. Okay, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. I've got a uh, impact swivel and an extension. I think that's going to work, but it is right there. So you're going to get. Yep. I got the battery died. Sorry about that. But the same falls true for the other side. It is right there. So we simply hook up the impact and try to do this one handed, which is always fun. Get it up on there good. And that's it. So, the motor mount on both sides are now off. Okay, ground strap has been removed and placed up there with the bolt. I actually put the bolt on the side of the, uh, the new block so I wouldn't forget it. That's going to have to be something I write down on my don't forget list. First, our next thing, next order in business here is to try to remove the salt and pepper shaker connectors. Okay guys, I want to talk to you about the salt and pepper shakers real quick on top of your motor. These are the main connectors to your fuel injectors and your other engine sensors like the air intake and um, well, throttle, throttle position sensor and you know, uh, engine coolant temp, EGR. But um, anyways, these are so easy to come off and they're, I mean, they're not so easy to come off. They're really easy to break. So let me show you guys how to take these off the proper way. Um, despite, if you can see this tab here, despite what you think, you want to pull on this, to pull it out. Don't pull on this part, actually. You actually press in on it, and as you press in on it, it runs it, the, basically runs it through a groove underneath the locking tab here and allows you to release it. So, it's really easy to take this, put a screwdriver underneath it, and pry it, and then break these tabs. Someone's already broken one on the back side of mine, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. There's basically... Try to remove the bracket here so you guys can see this easier. There we go. This clips onto your manifold or onto the intake manifold between the uh, upper plate cover. And you know what? There's a side. Let me let me flip it over here. So what I'm trying to do. There's one on both sides. So what I'm trying to do is push down on both of these and squeeze them together like this, and that will actually release it. Like that, see? So if you do it right, it'll uh, come right apart. You don't have to pry anything into the tabs and break the tabs to release it. So that's how, actually the correct way to get these salt and pepper shakers off. Remember, squeeze, push in, don't pull out. That's kitty litter. So my camera died. Sorry about that. But <laughs> got the transmission out. See? A little dark out here, but it is out. It's absolutely covered in oil. Everything was going smooth until it tipped sideways and all the transmission fluid came out of the speedometer hole. I even put a yoke on it so that wouldn't happen, but it did anyways. So It's out just to get clean, guys. Um, but when I was taking it out, I found out that the transmission cross mirror mount was completely shot. The thing was like... So, maybe it had something to do with some of the road noise I was getting. But it's shot, so that's got to be replaced. Um, I don't think I can look in here. Yeah, it's a mess right now. But um, I'll have to look under there tomorrow when it's got some light and see how um, how the the clutch looks. But the clutch looks stock, uh, nothing fancy, nothing special. So that means we probably got to replace the clutch too. So I'm opening up donations now. Please email me. With the information, I'll set up a GoFundMe and you guys are welcome to give me money so I can fix my clutch. Yeah, just kidding. Look guys.
guys, so that is it for this video. Listen, thank you again for watching. I am, I'm sorry that this, these videos aren't exactly, uh, I don't know, they don't seem entertaining to me because it's not like jumping from one big conclusion to another, um, but you're seeing the little steps that it takes to do something that I'm doing, like pulling a motor out of a car. It's not just, you know, getting the engine hoist and bolts and bolts, pulling it out. It's it's a lot more work than that. I mean, it's, it's the prep of the motor, trying to get it ready, and it's all little things that I'm trying to do right um, before I put this in. So, I mean, there there's a lot still to do. So if you don't know, this is already like, I think, the eighth video already of me for the engine swap. And eight videos of the engine still laying out of my 86. So I hope you guys are not losing interest because I mean, this is just how it is, man. This is, this is reality. Um, you spend a lot of hours, I spend days, you know, in this garage, cranking away some little thing like pulling the exhaust. So, I mean, that, that's what I did today. Today, we got the exhaust out, and I got a lot of little things done. To me, it's huge, it's a huge victory, because the exhaust is out, it's in the curb, it's on the driveway, it's ready to be thrown away, I don't want it. Um, the motor is done, it's tied up, it's pretty much ready to go, and all the little stuff we did as far as taking the transmission out, getting the, getting the uh, ground strap off, undoing the uh, electrical connections or the salt and paper shaker, salt and pepper shakers uh, for the engine. But I mean, that and deciding to take the transmission out because I want to clean it, you know, that's just how things are. You know, I, I could easily just swap this in, but that's how it is, man. So, um, but look, this is just one day's of work and. Um, I'm showing you guys. This is one day. I'm not going to throw into a 30-minute video, but the truth is that this is really, you know, eight hours that I've worked today on this car, and um, I wrenched on a lot of a lot of pieces of it. But it doesn't look like a lot of progress. But the transmission is out. It is sitting outside. We're going to clean it really good. We're going to be able to replace the clutch, and the motor is 100% ready to just hook an engine hoist to and pull out. And then after that, look, I'm sorry, in the next two, three videos, maybe even four, it's not going to be an engine running. It's not going to be this new engine in where I'm going to be driving off. No, I'm going to clean the engine bay. I'm going to show you guys that too. Um, and we're going to get everything ready and make it look pretty and clean for the new engine. I want this thing to look decent when we put all these new parts in, you know. Don't like bolting up new parts to old greasy parts. So, anyways, um, I think we made a lot of progress today. And uh, I hope you guys really enjoy watching these videos. I know it's it's kind of mundane, it's kind of boring sometimes, but please stick with me, it's gonna be awesome. Um, thank you for watching, please subscribe, make sure you click the like button, and guys, we'll see you next day, probably tomorrow. I'll probably pull the motor tomorrow. I'm off tomorrow, so hey, thanks for watching guys, take care.